Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Minnesota. For 25 years, your home for Minnesota Twins baseball. Another beautiful night for baseball in downtown Minneapolis where fans are hoping to witness more late game heroics from the Twins and their six time all star tonight. The Twins beat the Indians last night with a double dose of Mauer power behind the plate where he completed a strikeout, throw out double play, and beside it where Joe and Joe delivered the game winning hit in the eighth as the Twins rally for a 3 2 win. And on top of all of that, Tim Laudner. Joe did a pretty good job of dealing and directing Twins pitchers. What impressed you the most with that performance? Well, I love the fact that Joe was very engaged last night with his pitching staff. He was right in there with these guys. One of the most challenging things about catching is convincing your pitchers that their stuff is good enough to get major league hitters out. And the trick is, is if you can get them to convince themselves, well, now you really got something. And Joe did a heck of a job. Last night with Mike Pelfrey, I thought he did a great job with Jared Burton. He always does great with uh, Glenn Perkins coming in late in the game. So he does. He did a really, really nice job of being engaged with his pitching staff last night. Twins put themselves in position to win last night with some phenomenal fielding. Dick Bramer and Tom Kelly discuss how Gardy's guys got the job done with defense. Next game two, Twins and Drive from Target Field. Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. Twins are taking a three-game winning streak into tonight's game. It'll be Kevin Correa going for the Minnesota Twins against right-hander Corey Kluber, making his third start this year against the Minnesota Twins. 
Game two from Target Field. Dick Bramer along with Tom Kelly filling in for Burt Blylove. And what we saw last night is continued improvement by the Twins out in the field. And that might have been the difference in the ball game last night. Without a doubt, pitching and defense got it done last night. Our start of Pelfrey started the game, did a pretty good job for us. The bullpen was fabulous. And we made some plays in the field that uh, should make uh, Sports Center highlights. So, uh, again, uh, pitching and defense won the game for us. And uh, we take what they give us. Pedro Floramon in particular had a phenomenal night in the field got on base for the eventual game winning run and uh, that was the deficiency for the Cleveland Indians yesterday as they took a two nothing lead into the late innings their defense kind of betrayed them more than betrayed that was an, that was just awful and the, again uh, you know just some foolish plays on their side and, and of course it's the first game back from the all star break. I'll give them a little bit of a pass, but a uh, pass on that. But if they show up with the same routine tonight, they're going to have a hard time. Nick Swisher out in right field uh, for the ball game tonight. The bullpen had some issues as well. The uh, relievers for the Cleveland Indians had a rough time giving the Twins uh, three runs late in the ball game. It all added up to another low-scoring ball game and another Twins win. Now it's just a one-series homestand for the Twins. Nevertheless, they'd like to start winning series once again at home. An absolutely gorgeous night for baseball at this gorgeous ballpark. Most of the humidity seems to have left the area. We're about 10 degrees cooler than I think we were last night. A spectacular night for baseball. And the Twins are hoping to extend a midseason winning streak to four games. Kevin Correa taking the mound, hoping to pick up his seventh win of the year. And the Twins are hoping to even the season series with the Cleveland Indians. At four wins apiece. Tough way for Terry Francona and the Indians to start the second half. They had the ball game 2 0. Taking a lead into the late innings. Couldn't hold it. So we'll see what happens in game two. The Indians lining up with this Menards batting order. Michael Bourne in the leadoff spot as Drupal Cabrera batting second. Then Jason Kipnis, Nick Swisher hitting cleanup. Michael Brantley, Carlos Santana, Jason Giambi, Mark Reynolds, and Lonnie Chisenhall. And Kevin Correa 
will take them out for the Twins his 19th start of the year. Correa with his first 15 starts averaged just one walk per start. But now control for whatever reason Tom is uh, kind of been an issue for him he's issued 11 walks in his last three starts. Yeah that's not a good number we need to change that and fix that again get back to where we were when we started the season and, and into the first month uh, he was just outstanding he was our he was our bread and butter out there for, without a doubt and, and uh, again he, he got off to such a good start maybe we, you know got a little bit spoiled but still too many walks got to clean that up. Michael Bourne is Dribble Cabrera and Jason Kipnis for the Indians and there's a belt high strike. Good fastball to start the game. Bourne's been taking a lot of pitches, Dick, as he did yesterday. And he took that one right down the middle. And on the outside corner, 0 and 2. Bourne going through the American League for the first time, signing a multi year deal with the Indians. So here at Target Field for the first time as a member of the Indians. Twins probably not his favorite club simply from the standpoint of he was trying to market himself as a free agent as a center fielder a couple of teams in the National League were looking for a center fielder Phillies and the Washington Nationals and the Twins traded their center fielders to those two teams so yeah, again, he ended up in Cleveland. Well his game is speed and he got a big hit last night that's for sure. Chop to the right side Dozier. Awkwardly makes the oh, play. Wow. He spun his wheels in the outfield grass. One hopped his throw to Morno for the out. Well, he's, we always say be ready for the first inning. You can win or lose a game right in the first inning. And those are just a fabulous play right here. This is that spin move we talked about at our dinner table today. And uh, talked about making a spin move. Florimon making a spin move at, at, at shortstop. And, and here Dozier gets a chance to go with the spin. And this is, he got rid of it very quickly, and Justin was ready to field it. So. Uh, Good play on both part, both parts. You won't see many throws from that angle. <laughs> One down, and here's as Drupal Cabrera. Strike one. Pouring them strikes in there so far, Richard. Five pitches, four strikes. Mike Pelfrey, the starter last night, said in the bullpen he couldn't throw anything over the plate. Then he came out of the shoot in the first couple innings and threw nothing but strikes. It's a funny game sometimes. Mauer calling for it, a foul pop catch out number two. Northland forward at defense for the Twins with Cleet Thomas in left field, Aaron Hicks in center, Ryan Domit in right, Luf, Loramone, Dozier, Morno, Mauer. Same lineup the Twins sent out there last night. And a couple of quick outs here in the first inning for Correa. Yeah, Joe Mauer is their mainstay behind the plate. He's the number one guy, probably the number one catcher in. In American League for sure. Not a, is that an understatement? No, I, I won't get an argument from me. And how about the two throws though? Last one we saw at the All Star game when he laid the ball down there, the runner was called safe, but my goodness gracious, you couldn't have handed it to him any better. And last night, right on the money again. Dick, you can't hand the ball to the you know, shortstop or the second baseman any better than Joe throw it. So he's just uh, he got a fabulous throwing arm, outstanding hitter. He's got he got to rank right up there as one of the best ever to play the game without a, without a doubt batting well, titles. You name it, he does it. Two and zero oh to Jason Kipnis and a strike. Well, I tell people he's going to go to the Hall of Fame. Joe is. He's going to wear a Twins cap. We ought to uh, it ought to be easy for us to appreciate the player that he is instead of wow. you know being frustrated with a player that. You know that he isn't. Here's a bounder wide at first. Everybody, of course, would like the 28 home runs year in and year out, but that one season, power-wise, was a bit of an aberration. A little bit, only because of the Metrodome and a little bit shorter in left field there, and the ball was carrying pretty good there at the Metrodome and a shorter, shorter fence, and, and all that stuff added up to a few more home runs that way. But uh, Joe's hit a few, you know, the opposite way this year, and. and uh, Again, I, I, you know, whatever he does when he comes, I'm just happy to watch him hit. You know, I, I enjoy it so much. And if you're, you know, I think a real baseball fan, you, you know, when Joe Maurer comes up, you, you sort of sit, and stop, and make sure you pay attention. 
Two and two to Kipnis with two gone in the first. Full count Swisher on deck. Good try just missed the outside part of the plate. Real close pitch. Popped up took a little off got a little fly ball to left Thomas coming in. Still coming in and makes the catch. <laughs> A little bit of wind coming in from left field and it nearly brought that ball back to the infield. Half inning. And Ron Garden and I are hoping his twins can win a series here against the Indians before they head back out on the road for another week. This time going to the West Coast. The Menards batting order for the twins in game two. Brian Dozier, followed by Trevor Plouffe, Joe Maurer, Justin Morneau, Ryan Doman, Chris Colabello, the designated hitter, Aaron Hicks, Cleet Thomas, and Pedro Floramon. And the Twins will get their third look this year, sixth overall, at right-hander Corey Kluber, who has beaten them once and lost to them once. Excellent ERA, under four, seven and five, above 500, 95 innings. I don't know if he's going to make the 200 number, though, Dick, but uh, again, 22 walks, outstanding. 94 strikeouts, almost one per inning. This guy I think is going to be the real deal. I hope he has a good career. And, you know, we need good pitchers in our league, and, and uh, this guy looks like he can be the, be the be the guy for the Indians to be the number one guy. Dozier, Plouffe, and Maurer here in the first. Up and in, ball one. I don't want to sound like I'm making excuses for the hitters or anything, but we thought yesterday would be a tough day. After the break and, and right now that sun is beating on that green wall back there so pitchers in a little bit of shade. So it might be a little tougher for a little bit till the shade. Uh, you know the center field gets uh, surrounded by the shade and be a little easier to see. The Swisher with a catch Dozier's fly ball one down here's the Northland Ford defense for the Indians. Brantley Bourne and Swisher in the outfield Chisholm Hall Cabrera Kipnis Reynolds added to the infield mix at first base. And Carlos Santana behind the plate. When Kluber faced the Twins in early May in Cleveland, Trevor Plouffe hit a two run home run. Twins ended up beating Kluber and the Indians that day. Plouffe has actually hit two home runs against Kluber in their handful of matchups. Well, he throws strikes. Yeah, he doesn't walk people, he usually throws it over the plate. And those occasionally those fellows are going to you know misplace one every once in a while and somebody's going to get a good swing at one. And, but uh, you know that that's those things are sort of fine when there's nobody on base you know Bert will tell you that. And uh, again when you get the men on base and the three run bomb goes well it's a little bit different story but uh, this fellow to me he's got a nice breaking ball he's got a little bit of a slider pitch he can throw he's got a nice change up so he's got all four pitches and 
and for me, he, his control is, is very, very good. So I don't know. I, I don't want to sound like I'm falling in love with the guy, but he's 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 pretty good. One and two to Ploof. Oh. And a called third strike. Clipping the corner, two down. And that'll bring up Joe Mauer. It's a nice pitch here. This one is, I don't want to say it's on the outside corner, but it's real. You know, Trevor's got to get a swing at that one, try to foul it off, do the best you can with it. It's one of our pet peeves. We really don't like to see guys with the bat on the shoulder and just walk back to the dugout. It's we harp on our minor leaguers about that. And be competitive. Make each at bat count. They're precious, precious few. So, and you don't know how long they're going to last for you. So again, when you get an opportunity, you have to make the most of it. Don't give, don't give the at bats away. When Maurer faced Kluber in Cleveland in June, he hit a first inning home run. Caught up with a fastball and smoked it to right field. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Dick, is that his little bit of the off speed pitch right there? About 86? Yeah. That's good. Joe's got him right where he wants him, though. <laughs> Just ask Joe Smith, right? Two strikes. Oh, gosh. That's a lot of guys. There it is, the right center field. Might be an extra base hit. Mauer will round first, dig for second. Bourne's throw to the bag, not in time. That's a real strong throw by Bourne from right center field. A good throw, but this pitch gets a little bit too much of the strike zone for 0-2, and, and and Joe does what he does best. 0-2 strikes on him, and he pulls his hands in just a touch and just laces it to right center. Beautiful swing. Have you ever seen a guy Produced so well with two strikes on. The only one I always felt was the great two strike hitter was Brian Harper. Right. Brian Harper, he might as well just started with two strikes. <laughs> he would take some of the ugliest swings and get to 0 and 2, and then he would bear down like a you. Oh, he could bear down. Morno the batter. And that's dumped behind third, but a foul ball by about three feet. Look at what he has done. 60 hits with two strikes, hitting 282 with two strikes, eighth in the American League in that category. Full count, 382. Whoa, it just gets worse. <laughs> and so a two out double here by Maurer has set up Morno, one strike. Oh. Another off speed pitch and another swing and a miss, and now Morno up there. I think that's the change up, Richard. About 83 miles an hour. We're going to have to investigate that one at 86. Must be like a two seamer. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, and two. One and two. Well, there's your batter's eye that we talked about earlier, and I I always felt that. Well, I hit 180 when I played, so I I, I have a lot of excuses. But uh, again, uh, I think it's a little tough on the hitters right now. Don't don't ask Joe about that. Checked his swing two and two. The rest of us human beings have problems, but sometimes when the sun is really bearing down on that backdrop. It, can make it a little bit. They say it's particularly tough. The mid-afternoon starts three o'clock, and we are starting an hour earlier here tonight. Obviously, six o'clock rather than seven o'clock. It all depends where the sun's sitting and all that stuff. Two and two to Justin Morno. Santana sets up inside, and now a miss inside. It's a full count with Domit on deck. That was a total misfire there. Unless he was trying to get Justin to move his feet, which he did. That was way inside. So. I suspect he tried inside on Joe with two strikes. I would have to think this pitch should be away. Nope. In the dirt, it was 0-2 to Morno, and now Morno will fill first base, and Dillman will have a chance. Those last couple of pitches to Justin, they weren't too good. Total misfires. We saw each team last night put together a scoring threat with two outs in an inning. The difference is the Twins took advantage of a couple and the Indians did not. Yeah, well, they, the Indians sure gave us some opportunities and presented themselves. And we, I guess, got three hits in the eighth inning. We had three hits the whole game. So 
we doubled our output there in, in a matter of minutes. With some there was you know so many surprises in that game last night with some of the defensive plays and, and then uh, Terry Francona electing the pitch to Joe Maurer. And I wonder if that same scenario comes up again what's, what's <laughs> going to happen. Today. But Terry's done a fantastic job with these Indians and getting them in position to be successful this year and, and uh, you got to tip your hat to him. He's done pushed all the right buttons so far. And, and uh, we'll see if he can uh, keep the team close into September. Well, how quickly this well forget the game, an inning can turn on you. Two outs quickly. 0 and 2 to Maurer, he gets a double. 0 and 2 to Morno. You walk him and now it's 2 and 0 to Ryan Doman. Yeah, the last four pitches or so have not been very pretty at all. Total misfires. I hope he's okay. 2 and 0 to Ryan Doman. Ooh. 2 and 1. That pitch had good movement on it. Just cutting right across the plate. And whether he did that on purpose or not, but the ball sailed right into Doman and he swung over top of it. Over the inside corner, two and two. Doman figures to see a lot of time in the outfield now with the Twins demoting Chris Parmalee, who had played most of the time in right, and also Oswaldo Arcia. You know, we're going to have to wait and see what happens when uh, the big guy gets back. Uh, Willingham comes back, and of course, that'll probably be at least a couple more weeks. But uh, uh, Rick again, uh, Ryan's done such a terrific job. Somebody's going to have to take a seat. Talked to uh, Josh Willingham a bit last night. He's hoping to rejoin the team toward the end of this month, early in August, perhaps. Two and two to Ryan Doma. Twins in position to draw first blood here in the first inning, thanks to a Mauer double and a Morno walk. Big pitch here for Kluber with a count two and two, and he missed mm. inside. That'll fill the count Boy. and allow Mauer and Morno to leave from their bases early. See that one again. Santana was sitting down in a way, and he just misfired at low and in. That's missing your spot right there. I don't know what holding on to it just a little bit too long, or what's going on out there. But uh, we've had some misfires out of this young man so far tonight. Three and two to Ryan Doman. Foul tip. If nothing else, the pitch count. Quite a bit higher than yeah. we thought it would be. Yeah. He got a couple of quick outs with Dozier and Ploof gone on what six pitches, yeah. something like that. Now it's up to 22. Yeah, Morneau got to three and two or three and two again. And, and this is what we talked about earlier, Dick, with the competitive at bat. Be competitive. Give him a fight. No easy outs. Got him. Tailing fastball up and away. And the Twins strand a couple in the first.
welcome back to Target Field, where we are still scoreless between the Twins and Indians as we head to the second inning. Well, Pedro Florimone has been a real bright spot for the Twins this year. And last night, he added a couple more spectacular plays to his highlight reel. Those kind of plays have almost become routine for Pedro, and his teammates are just as impressed as anybody. Trevor Plouffe said last night, I never realized how bad I was at shortstop until I watched him play there. Now, Trevor, of course, has found a home now at third base, but Dick and Tom, I think it's safe to say Florimone may be one of the best defensive shortstops in the league right now. Well, he's certainly playing great. And he certainly saved the game last night for us. He made a couple big league plays that you don't see very, very often. So uh, he's getting better as the season goes on. I think he's gaining more confidence. And, and he needs to become a mainstay, somebody that we can count on, be a leader in the infield. One strike to Swisher. I want to ask you about that because the first I had heard of Pedro Florimon came from Tom Bernanski. You saw him in the uh, Eastern League at Double A. And when you see a, a prospect at Double A, the question is: Is he going to be able to hit up here? And that question has followed Florimon. But if you if you can field down there, you should be able to field up here, shouldn't you? Yeah, some of those minor league fields, especially the one in New Britain, if you can play there, you can you can play anywhere. This is you know. Magical carpet here, playing right. in this field, and mostly all the fields in the major league. But yeah, again, uh, a lot of you know, a lot of times we always felt in the Southern League, Richard, that if you play in the Southern League and function and hit 300 or 290, you could certainly play in the big leagues. A couple of plays last night. Just started the game off with this play here, diving to his right, and this is a really a highlight play right there coming in. And that this one here starts the ninth inning to get the first out on the board. That's always a big out. So all the plays meant something last night, Richard. And that's what's really, really important. That making plays when they really, really need to make a play. That's big ligger. One down here in the second, Michael Brantley, the batter. And ball one. The uh, Twins acquired Florimone off of waivers from the Orioles in early December of 2011. And a few weeks after that, uh, Tom Bernanski was one of the instructors at the Twins Fantasy Camp. And I knew that Tom was a hitting instructor at the double A level. So I asked him about Florimone. And he said at that time he thought Florimone could be the starting shortstop for the Twins in 2012. Bounce to the right side. Morno will go to the bag. Two down. In fact, it was about a year later, but Tom Bernanski was right on. He is the starting shortstop and playing well for the Twins. Tonight's cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brood, Coors Light. And you can see four early errors for Florimone, and then, hey, you have hitting slumps. I guess you can have fielding slumps. He had a few in a short period of time in June, but other than that, it's been a really good season. I think a couple of the errors in June were throwing errors. Remember, he's yep. dropping his arm down just a little bit, getting underneath the ball, and he made a couple of throwing errors towards first base. And, and I know two for sure were throwing errors, but yeah, we, <laughs> I was trying to give him a little bit of an excuse in the, the cold weather in April, and that was uh, the big attributor to the, uh, to the errors, but uh, I'm sure it, ah, sometimes it, Players that they're not used to the cold weather, especially if they haven't played in it much in the minor leagues, it can be a little difficult. One strike to Carlos Santana doing the catching tonight. One thing I liked, and he wasn't right about this, but in the midst of that June string where he made a few errors, he said, I promise you it'll be the last error I make this year. Now he has since made one or two more, but he took it very seriously and he, he you know, takes great pride in what he does on the field, in the field. And uh, well, there's a lot of history in the, you know, for the Latin American player to to uh, do well, and, and uh, you know they got a tradition of shortstops and the Concepciones and these kind of people that are just uh, you know outstanding Aussie Indian types. You know, guys that you know, and I think they take it really personal, especially at that position. One and two to Carlos Santana, and and you should. You don't take it personally, probably, probably in the wrong business. Correa's 22nd pitch of the night. Just missed the up and in corner. Two just and two. For the fans at home, uh, maybe you should know we're, we're just about a shift here. Real close. The shortstop is almost 
Well, he's not right behind second, but he's on the shortstop side, and and uh, Brian Dozier is into the outfield grass. Three and two. Jason Giambi on deck. Santana had a pretty rough night last night. I'm sure he's looking to rebound after that poor performance. To do something. He's one of the young and upcoming hitters in the American League. Full count. Tapped up the line foul. Still looks like he's in the pull mode though just like last night with pull 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 and, and uh, tonight so far it looks like that pitch is right on the outside corner and he was trying to hook it. And appropriately that's why we probably have the shift them. Another 3 2 pitch to Carlos Santana. Another one pulled foul. Talked about Correa's control issues that have arisen lately. Eleven walks in his last three starts and five of them in five and a third innings in his most recent start in St. Petersburg. Very unlike Kevin who went through the entire month of April five starts and only walked five guys and pitched thirty six and a third innings. High fly right center field Hicks toward the gap plenty of room for the catch. And another one, two, three inning for Kevin Correa. No score going to the bottom of the second inning. Our AT&T Twitter poll tonight. We're asking you: Can Cleveland overtake the Tigers in the Central Division? You can vote via Twitter using the hashtags on the screen: hashtag Cleveland Central, hashtag Detroit Central. Cast your vote. The fact that they are only a game and a half out this late in the season would suggest that they can. But I guess the question is whether they will. That's the question. Tigers uh, probably have uh, the freedom to do some tinkering to their roster that maybe the Indians don't at this point. Well, if the Indians feel like they got a chance and by the standings they certainly do, I would think that they would try to make a move or two or three to because uh, they look like they got a, a few holes they need to uh, tighten up or plug up. Things can change, of course, but right now it does not look like the wild card, either wild card, will come out of the Central Division. Colabello on the first wow. pitch. Skies one to right. Swisher ducks into the shade, makes the catch, one away. I'll bring up Aaron Hicks, but first a reminder that when you join the Twin Season Ticket family, you'll be hitting the sweet spot. Purchase any of the Twin Season Ticket packages, receive 10% off food, beverage, and merchandise bought here at the ballpark. Season ticket prices are also up to 20% cheaper 
than single game purchases. You can call 833 Twins or visit twinsbaseball.com. Check out the option to learn about the benefits to come along with season tickets. Aaron Hicks, the batter. Takes a strike at the knees. Chris swinging at the first pitch and uh, flying out. Uh, Aaron's definitely forced to take one, so that's your job. You have to take a strike, you have to take a strike. Thought about bunting and pulled the bat back, ball one. I like that because I was, we were sort of looking for that one last night against uh, Kazmir. Kaz, Kazmir. Yeah, I say the Kazmir. Kazmir, thank you. And uh, we were having such a tough time with him. I, there was a few guys in the lineup, but I thought maybe have a chance to maybe bump one. Driving to right, Swisher going back and makes the catch on the edge of the track, two down. And that'll bring in Cleet Thomas. That's a good swing by Aaron Hicks right there. He turned on this fastball and he hit it awful hard. And unfortunately, we couldn't have elevated that one a little bit. It probably would have went a, a pretty long way. The vote for the Arby's value player of the game text the word value followed by a space. And the player's name to short code 234 234. Cleet Thomas, the batter. A couple of quick outs here in the second inning. Ooh. Up, up and Ooh. away, ball one. This is where the trouble started last inning for Kluver. And got two quick outs and then uh, sort of fell asleep or something. Yeah, these two pitches weren't very close either, Richard. He's 2 0 again. 30th pitch, 17 strikes so far for Kluber. Ooh. 3 and 0, Floral Moan on deck. In the minor leagues, when we would watch a game and, and uh, get two, for, two outs real quick, and, and then the, for some reason, sometimes the minor league pitcher he falls asleep a little bit. And then it becomes the minor league walk. There, there you go. Thomas will reach on four pitches and Floramone will come to the plate. Good ball game for Floramone in the field at the plate. Got on base a couple of times. Got a base hit in the eighth inning that started the move toward the third run of the ball game. Ended up scoring on Mauer's single. Cleet Thomas is a threat to steal, and uh, I'll throw the clock on him, Richard. See just where we're at here with this Kluber guy, and see if we can get in position to maybe steal a base. Opponents are five of seven with him on the mound in terms of stealing. Big leg kick and ball one. Got one one nine on that one. That's not too bad. Maybe on the breaking ball, be a little bit slower to home. Maybe you have to guess for the breaking ball and then take your opportunity. One and oh to Florimo. Two and oh. Six straight. Yeah. And it's the second time already in this ball game where Kluber has thrown six straight out of the strike zone. Catcher's getting out there to get after him a little bit, and I don't blame him. So, you know, pretty quick. One, two, two outs, and then. Uh, Whatever happens uh, to this pitcher, I, I, I've never figured it out. So I'm sure he's trying to throw it over the plate. It's just not working out. Now is not a time to steal. He's thrown six straight balls. Let's not maybe do him a favor by getting thrown out in this situation. So uh, you can see Cleed, he'll probably be staying right there where he's at. And it looks like Florimont's in the take mode. The way he took the last pitch. Strike and it's two and one. Trying to put together a threat with two outs in the first. Bauer doubled, more no walk. I would have to think this would be another fastball, so it's probably not a pitch to be running on. Two and two. One, two, four to home. Opportunity here for a breaking ball, but it's one of these decisions that you have to make as a manager whether you want uh, your ninth place hitter just to maybe take his at bat and then start the next inning with uh, 
if he does make it out, start the next inning with your leadoff hitter and go from there. Thomas goes, and the pitch chopped foul at the plate. Guardy's trying to stay aggressive, and get the runners in motion at the appropriate times, trying to make something happen. He has a lot of confidence in Florida Mine. He's going to get the bat to the ball. All good stuff. Thomas with his lead has not stolen yet successfully in three tries. Santana had some issues behind the plate that his backup catcher Jan Gomes does not have. It's night and day. Those two. Thomas does not go and it's wide three and two and I'll bet he'll be going on this one. If he doesn't we need to replace Cleet Thomas. <laughs> Santana's only thrown out four base dealers. Floramone taps at foul. Santana's thrown out four. Base dealers at 43 attempts, a throwout percentage of 9.3. What's the average now, Dick? I think it's about 36. Something yeah, like that, 37. I, I, that might even well, be a little high. It's 36. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was 36 for you know somewhere near that right. you know point whatever, but somewhere near that 36 number. Another 3-2 pitch to the number nine hitter. With Thomas going. Floromo cuts through a pitch down and in. Second inning in a row where the inning ends with a swinging strikeout. Special ceremony, even though they were not going to come to Minnesota for more than 20 years. <laughs> July 20th, 1938, a very big day in Twins history. Tony Oliva was brought into the world throughout, look at that, right down the middle. Right down the middle. Strike Tony down. Oliva celebrating his 75th birthday. Tony, welcome to the TV booth and happy birthday for the fifth time. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here when you dig and and Tom and uh, to be here to be hey, I still uh, dreaming. Yeah, I still dreaming to be here Hey, uh, 75 years old 52 years for the Minnesota Twins uh, when I, I expect maybe to be here all the six months or less and 52 years later I still here. Giambi takes a ball one and one. But Tony you've served the team in so many different capacities as a player. The coach, now a broadcaster on the Spanish radio broadcast, and 
Now, there's a reason they've kept you around for 52 years. You're, you're I, I tell people this. You're the best ambassador the Twins have ever had. Well, it's very nice that you think like that, and uh, the Twins uh, uh, think like that. But uh, you know, the fans have a lot to do with that. I live here in Minnesota, and the people here is great. Giambi takes outside two and one. How much did it mean uh, to you in 1987? Tom has his World Series ring on the 1987 ring. You were, of course, your playing days were gone by then, but you were uh, a coach on uh, what turned out to be a World Championship of ball club here in Minnesota. Giambi to left. Thomas over makes the catch. One away. I don't know that catch is making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the ball look like the ball keep it going, going, and he make a funny he catch come, there. I think the ball maybe <laughs> go back his behind his neck. <laughs> well, here is a, a younger Tony Oliva. Spent his entire playing career with the Twins. Handful of at bats in '62 mm -hmm. and '63. Rookie of the year '64. Batting title '64, '65, and '71. One down and Reynolds takes up ball one. You're in the Twins Hall of Fame, Tony, and there are many of us who think that you belong in the Baseball Hall of Fame uh, in Cooperstown. What would that mean to you if that were to happen? Well, if, if, if it doesn't happen, it could be a big thing. Big thing for me and for the family. Two down. And, uh, and you know, for the friends uh, and the people who believe that I belong to the Hall of Fame. It's something that uh, uh, any day go by that the people not remind me, hey, you belong to a Hall of Fame. A lot of ex baseball players that play engaged, managers that play uh, against them, they think the same way that I belong to the Hall of Fame. But that would be nice. You know, you see how hard the people working here in the stadium and around the Twin City and around the country to try to help me to get into the Hall of Fame. That was. That was uh, Sometimes I feel like uh, I say embarrassed well, a little bit, you know, because that should, it should not be that way. But that's good when the people uh, do that, something like that for you that they believe that you belong to Hall of Fame. Well, all, all I can do is echo those sentiments that uh, Dick poured out earlier. And, and anybody that watched uh, Tony O or had the privilege to watch Tony O swing that bat and play right field. And, Throw that baseball, up. you know, it was so entertaining, and you could learn so much from watching Tony play the game. And, and uh, he played it at like aces every day, every night, and his numbers speak for themselves. And and it's beyond me how uh, the man is not in the Hall of Fame. I, I just don't get it. All I, I know is it. that you know when we go to Baltimore and we run into Jim Palmer, a Hall of Fame pitcher, and from time to time you'll ask Jim, you know, who's yeah. not in the Hall of Fame that should be in. Tony's name is at the very top of his list, right. Right. and Jim had to pitch against Tony. He would know firsthand. One and two to Lonnie Chisenhall with two gone in the Cleveland third inning. It's been eight up and eight down so far for Kevin Correa. Now outside. It's that tailing fastball is running away from a little bit. That's the one I think he tries to do just a little bit too much with and ends up throwing a few more balls than maybe he really has to, Dick. And I see him control that thing just a touch more and maybe rein it in just a little bit. Two and two. And a little pop fly. Floramone takes it. Tony, that's how I used to hit. Another one, two, three <laughs> inning. Tony, congratulations again. Happy 75th birthday. Let's do it again on Free Your Radio. I go for that. It's great. And thank you, guys, for having me here. I have the opportunity to tell all those people uh, thank you for being here today and wish me a happy birthday. That was a pleasure. Many, many more, senor. Thank you, guys.
is presented by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. By Grand Casino, the best stories start here. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, for the everyday competitor in all of us. It's great to have Twins Hall of Famer Tony Oliva with us at the top of this inning. The uh, Texas Rangers tonight eventually are going to induct Yvonne Rodriguez into their Hall of Fame. They're in a rain delay right now down in Arlington, Texas. An interesting situation there, Tom. Yvonne Rodriguez will be inducted. They offered the same opportunity to Juan Gonzalez, but he declined their invitation to enter their Hall of Fame. Well, they don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> what, yeah, that's one of those things you should only be asked to do once, right? Quite an honor to be inducted to an organization Hall of Fame, whatever it may be. And I'm sure um, the honor you're getting this uh, this year, Dick. I'm sure you appreciate. Yes, very and, much uh, so. You know, to say no, I guess he's got his reasons, so they won't have to worry about it anymore. One and one to Dozier, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. I think you call that turning the page. Yeah. Okay. Turn the page. Not the only rain delay tonight, by the way. Uh, they've got one going right now in Anaheim. That doesn't happen very often. No. That's got to be the last guess. Dozier lifts it foul over into the seats. But Tony O, Dick, you read off all his stats now. No, you read half of his stats, right, maybe. Right. And uh, the accomplishments, and and you talked about being an ambassador for the game of baseball, especially in the Upper Midwest. It's it's got to be Tony O written all over. One and two to Dozier. I feel qualified to make that statement because I've been matched up with Tony so often in the caravan, and there probably isn't a caravan stop anywhere in the five state area that Tony and I haven't been to over the years, and uh, he is just so universally mm -hmm. embraced by Twins fans wherever we go. Hold foul, still two and two. Well, the Twins have made Kluber work. They've have not right. been able to get a leadoff man on, or for that matter, a guy on with one out. He's been tough that way. But Two he's outs. thrown 45 pitches, and he's still looking for his seventh out. Two and two. Popped up, should be out number seven. We're going to fight over it. Cabrera comes in, one away. The Indians' rotation. Pitching the fourth fewest innings in the American League. You look at guys like Justin Masterson, who's done a nice job. Twins will face him tomorrow. Ubaldo Jimenez has shown some flashes of kind of a little better last time. Right. But it's still an issue that Terry Francona and the Indians are sorting through. There's some that are linking the Indians in trade discussions with the Cubs for Matt Garza. It seems apparent that Garza is not going to be pitching for the North Siders. Uh, in Chicago much longer foul back one strike. Yeah, he's a commodity that's for sure. Somebody's going to take a chance on him. He's had a few injuries the past year or two and they're definitely going to be rolling some dice with this guy. That's why it's hard to really give up too much. Especially when you look at the history of a player and he's got some injuries. And get a little gun shy and just about pulling that trigger and you're going to trade you know a couple prospects or two and you're not real sure what you're getting, so it's uh, you know general manager's nightmare. He's got to do something, and he doesn't want to really do the wrong thing or overpay. But uh, you know sometimes you got to take a chance. Two strikes to Plouffe was called out on strikes his first time up. What was it like for you uh, as a manager? Were you consulted by Andy McPhail yeah. when uh, yeah. the yeah. likes of a Don Baylor or a Joe Negro, somebody like that, yeah. became available? Yeah, you get asked and. You know, you give your opinion, and the general manager is going to ask a number of his people about what they think, and then he's going to take all the information and make a, a decision. And uh, you know, you always give your opinion. I know the one we anguished over uh, for hours and hours and days was uh, was uh, Frank Viola going to the Mets. The train, yeah. right? Yeah, that was really a hard one for Andy. He, he must have called me every other. Hour. I mean, he was calling. Me. Well, we, 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 you know, Andy, do what you think is right. You know, you know I grew up with Frank Viola. I, I didn't want him to go. You know, I had him his first day in professional ball. 
Kluber strikes out swinging two down. Well, that's a big breaking ball right there from Kluber. Really fooled Trevor a little bit with that one. You see that breaking ball dipping way down and away and Trevor was such he was just fooled on the pitch and you know he didn't look particularly good on that. He's had a couple of rough at bats so far tonight. And the shade is, you know, that's starting to fill in in the back there in the background now, so I've run out of excuses. So <laughs> That was just a bad at bat. That's all. Move along to the next one. Here's Bauer, and he takes up high ball one. Bauer cracked a double to right center field with two outs in the first, was left there. But uh, one hit, Bauer's double, and a pair of two out walks. I don't know why they just don't put two strikes on the board, and we'll go from there. In an effort to speed up the yeah, game? sure. There you go. Wow, he didn't like that one either. 2 and 0. Oh. We talked a little bit about this last night regarding Maurer. There have been uh, challenges to his throne as the American League's best catcher. I left out Alex Avila of Detroit. He had a good year a couple of years ago at the plate. Some people thought, well, all right, he's an up and comer and all that, but now Avila's uh, had some injuries. He's yeah. fallen back. He really has had a, a few injuries that the injuries have really hurt his performance. You know, you can, you know, you watch him try to run. He could hardly run uh, with his knee and. He's had a few other things go on too. So yeah, he's been really hurt by the setback. But you know, you take your hat off to the guy, he gets out there. He he gets after and plays, you know, and you know he's hurting. But uh, you know, Joe's sitting up there at the top and um, I think the next fellow will be the fellow from Kansas City, Richard. He he looks like the real deal to me. Three and one and Mauer takes strike two. Okay, now we're ready. <laughs> Morno on deck. Joe's had a good look at five pitches now, so blooper guy, he's in trouble here with this one. Yeah. A diamond cutter. That is an official diamond cutter. When the pitcher's got a duck like that, that that's an official diamond cutter. A double in the first, a single in the third, three straight ringing base hits for Maurer in this series. That one made a loud sound. Watch the duck. Wow. And that's a diamond cover. Wow. Another two out base runner for the Twins. Morno fell behind 0 and 2, and then Kluber ended up walking him in the first inning. Mentioned the Clovers had two prior starts against the Twins. They beat them in early May in Cleveland. And then the other game that he pitched against the Twins was that game on a Saturday. P.J. Walters just mm -hmm. couldn't throw it over the plate. Right. And yeah, a very frustrating game. ball yeah, game. That was bad. Squirted behind third and kicked into the foul territory. And Maurer will hold up at second. Maurer should get credit for a base hit on a ball that was spinning its way. Ward choosing all's glove and then spun its way out. Yeah, that's got to be a hit on the board. Uh, I'm sure Justin's not real proud of that one, but he's going to take it. And we have runner in scoring position and another two out opportunity to to get a run on the board. And Doma at the plate in precisely the same situation he came up in the first inning. Bauer at second, Morno at first, and two away. Doman run, ran the count full, and then struck out on a tailing fastball. It's really, it's something, Richard. How the the innings have all been the same. You know, yep. two quick outs, and then uh, things let loose. And again, the Twins cashed in with some two out hits in the ball game yesterday. High and tight, ball one. Make the manager feel a little better if we could uh, do that a little bit sooner in the game or a little bit earlier <laughs> in the game. <laughs> Stop some of that hair from turning gray or grayer. I know all about that. Swing and a miss, one and one. I believe that's the old change up there, the old equalizer. Tailing 
outside, two and one. He threw the changeup again and tried to aim for that lower part outside corner, and he just didn't throw all of that one as well as he threw the one before. Sometimes pitchers try to make it a little bit better, and it ends up being worse. But uh, at least he's trying a few different things here. Crack on the ground, right to Kipnis, pretty hard off the barrel of the bat. Dolman leaves two more aboard. The Twins have left five on through three. Scoring game on our hands here in game two. You can ask a question online at carsoup.com slash baseball. Tonight's question comes from Sonia in St. Paul. Wondering if Tom Kelly, how did you handle dealing with trade speculation as a manager? You got a guy in your roster, maybe even a key guy in your roster. Yeah. We had Aggie, you know, like Frank Viola. That was that was difficult. Uh, it's 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 never fun time. You know, I've always tried to say that we uh, handle the business of the game of baseball in the winter time and uh, play baseball in the summer. But in July, when for this trade deadline and the waiver thing, and you know, you, it gets a little. If your team is in that position, you know, where you, you might you have to trade a few people, and it becomes very difficult. And it's difficult for everybody, especially the player, utmost the, the player, but. You know, as managers and coaches, you grow up with some of these players. Like I had Frank Viola from day one of his pro career, and you know that was really hard for me to let Frankie go. And uh, but I understand the business of the game. And the general manager's got to do what he's got to do. So, but uh, that being said, it, it's it's certainly harder for the the player unless he wants to get out, and then it's the story. But for the most part. Uh, the dealings I have, the most of them all want to stay, and because uh, Minnesota is such a great place to play baseball, so I think it was harder to leave Minnesota for a lot of the players, and I, I think their families all liked it here and enjoyed it here. They're all treated very, very well, and still are. So, uh, for the most part, uh, it's really tough on the players, and uh, you know, but. As a safe house, so to say, uh, when you get to the ballpark and start playing, you sort of forget about all them other things, and, and the baseball end of it takes over again. But as soon as the game's over, some of these thoughts start creeping into your head again, and, and uh, so and that becomes difficult that way. But I think uh, when the game started, most people could, you know, turn that end of it off and turn on the baseball. It was 0 and 2. Now it's 3 and 2. And Bourne frustrated. He might have swung a ball four. When a trade was executed in the middle of the season, what role did you play in terms of informing well, the player? Uh, usually, the general manager would make the call uh, to the player and, and tell him that that's sort of his job. 
in my mind. And, and Andy did it. Terry did it. Uh, and now when we were at home, okay, uh, say somebody got traded during the course of a game, you had to take the player out of the game, and then he sort of knows he's being traded, and, and you tell him you know, as he's on his way up the steps, and you know, it's not that it's a total surprise for some players, but. Uh, when you're at home and during the course of the day, you can tell them. But when you, you know, 11 o'clock uh, and the trading deadlines are approaching, uh, you know, the phone call is what works after that. But uh, it could, so it goes both ways. Born drawing a walk, first base runner for the Indians. Cabrera, the batter, and up high, and uh, Correa having a tough time throwing strikes. Well, one. Case and, and that comes to mind is uh, Rick Aguilera, who was down in the bullpen and he was traded before he came into the game. I want to say seventh, eighth inning, something yeah. like that. He had to call him in from the bullpen yeah. at the Metrodome. That was bad. That was, that's exactly what happened. And I had to tell him. And I know I made that really short because I, I was sort of upset because he's done so much for the Twins right. and uh, our history of the Twins baseball. And, that was hard for me, uh, and I, I remember just telling he knew, and, you know, he didn't need, need me to say anything. He knew, and so uh, we got that one out of the way as quick as we could because that was a that was that one hurt a little bit. One and one, the count to is Drupal Cabrera, Correa pitching from the stretch for the first time. Cabrera fouled out to Maurer, his first time up. Horn's an excellent base dealer, and Correa is very quick to home, so we'll see what happens here. Fastball sailing Boy, wide, two and one. Quick step right there with the old quick pitch type thing, and well under a second to home. So, But again, sometimes you try to go too quick, and you always leave that pitch up and away, just like uh, Correa did on that one. So there's a fine line there in going quick to home and, and still keeping the pitches in the strike zone where you're supposed to. Which is the important thing. Nice pitch. Took a little bit off. Got a hauled strike two and two. 105 to home. That's good. Good number. And the way Joe's throwing the ball, uh, Bourne would have a very, very difficult time stealing the bag. Principally Maurer, but also Domit, Herman. Done a great job controlling the running game. They've allowed 34 steals, but there have been 21 throwouts. High fly right center field. Hicks in the Born gap. He's going to tie. And the right fielder Domit with the catch and a two hop throw to the bag. There it is. Good play. Good player by right fielder Domit. Uh, not that Hicks he couldn't have got around and so he would have to turn his body a little bit to get in the proper throwing position. And it was a little bit easier for the right fielder to take that ball and plant his left foot and throw. So it's good play by uh, by Ryan and, and AC Hicksy trying to get in position and, and Ryan is sort of going that way so it makes it a little bit easier for him. But again either guy could have made the play and, and been done done a good job with it and they both were in position to do it. Jason Kipnis the batter. Up and away ball one and Correa's strike percentage has uh, fallen off considerably here in the fourth inning. 51 pitches, 29 strikes. Still has not given up a hit. I didn't want to say that. You sort of have to say. It, right? well, I'm just not. That I've been in the dugout too many years, so I can't say. It. Long hold and a step up. And all these things are called, or these signs are given from Terry Steinbach in the dugout, our bench coach. He handles the running game for the Twins, and, and uh, he gives signals to Joe Mauer, and Joe relays them to the our pitchers. That's called the hold. The last one. This is a slide step. Two and zero. Oh. Sometimes he's a little too quick with the slide step because you've seen most of the time, Dick, how he's leaving the pitches are. Up in the zone, set it down. So sometimes when they go too fast, they just have a tendency uh, their arm does not catch up and, and able to get the pitch down in the strike zone. So arm drags behind a little bit. There we go. 
to left field. First Cleveland hit. Thomas nice hesitates going. Nice and going, fires a one hop throw to Plouffe. That's why I didn't say. Boom. So that one's on me. First and yeah. second one down. And that'll bring up Swisher. You can set your compass due north Thursdays on Fox Sports North Thursday nights. Join host Bill Shirk and Laura Shara as they take a look at the stories and adventures of outdoor enthusiasts in up, uh, the upper Midwest. Due north outdoors Thursdays at 630 only on Fox Sports North. Well, the Indians have a threat now. First and second one down Nick Swisher at the play. You know sometimes when you're watching a baseball game and a team has a chance has a chance has a chance to score and they don't score. The other team for some reason gains a little momentum off of that and, and here are the Indians right now. Kind of saw that play out of the ball game last night. The Indians had chances Correct. absolutely to add right. to a two nothing lead. They never really got it done and then before Correct. he knew it the game was tied then the Changed next chance. Yep. Yeah absolutely right. One and oh to Swisher. Three strikeouts in the game last night. Hit a ground ball to second his first time up tonight. Now Kipnis did a nice job of lacing that ball to left field. The pitch was out away from him a touch and he didn't try to pull it. He didn't try to do too much with it. He just go ahead and laced it on over there to left field. That was really a nice swing. I guess that's why he's an all-star player hitting over 300. Ooh, a half swing and a foul one and one. Head in the count to Swisher his first time. I think he's been ahead of the count in two days. And that wasn't it. He got lucky, he fouled it off. Get ahead in the count when you're hitting as a youngster. You want to make sure you get a pitch you can handle and put a good swing on it. Fouled away one and two. Tampa Bay beat Toronto. The Rays continue rolling on 4 3 this afternoon. The Yankees 5 2 over the Red Sox. Rivera got the save, got a standing ovation at Fenway Park when he entered the ball game. Very nice. Tampa's playing a lot of close to the best ball games, winning a lot of games 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 3, 4 to 3. Pitching really, really well. Twins three games ahead of the White Sox. They won today, 10-6 over Atlanta. You can see in the East, the Yankees uh, six games out of first place. And Swisher cuts through a cut fastball. Well, that was a nice pitch. That pitch is down and in. That's nasty. Basically worked away, 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 and then come down and in. Swisher hurt. No chance. Ooh. Nasty. I think he calls that that cutter, right? He worked on that a lot in spring training, throwing that cut cut pitch. Someone fell in love with it, and uh, but that was certainly effective right there. That's for sure. Two on, two out, and Michael Brantley, the batter, hit a two hopper to Morno his first time up. Half swing, a called strike. Brantley looks back. He didn't think he offered at it. Thought the pitch was inside, but Gary Darling said otherwise. I wonder if he called it over the plate or that he swung. I'm not sure. Well, Fox Track says it caught the corner. That's a strike. Been a big believer of Fox Tracks. Yeah. One strike to Brantley. One and one. Brantley with 48 runs batted in because he's hit very well with runners in scoring position. That's an excellent batting average with RISP 366 right up there with some pretty good hitters. Just off the plate. Wow. Two and one. Correa trying to pitch around a leadoff walk. You've watched enough to know how often those guys usually come around to score. Correa's got a couple outs. If he can get Brantley, he can strand a couple of runners here in the Cleveland fourth inning. I think he's trying to save that cutter for two strikes, but 
may have to pull it out of the hat here. Yep, there, there it was. was. Two and two. Now he knows he's in a little bit of a jam here, and he's going to go to his bread and butter. And uh, the pitch has been working for him tonight fairly well. So now we got two strikes on him. What do you think is coming this time? I think he's got to throw it again. Okay. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, you throw it an argument. Here we go. If you throw it where he's thrown it to both Swisher yeah. and Brantley, you really can't be hurt by it. Again. No. It's going to get pulled foul. Correct. Right? Absolutely, or miss like Swisher did, and Brantley did get a piece. But uh, uh, I don't know who's winning, going to win the argument here. But uh, I assume one one guy wanted it down and away and fastball, and the other one wanted the cutter. So I have to think Joe was looking. For Probably throw the ball on the outside part of the plate here, figuring that maybe we got him his bat speeded up here, so maybe we we'll try to slow him down now, and then we get the three balls and come back with the cutter. So we're going to see. The pitcher usually wins these arguments. The game within the game. Yep. There it is. Cutter and another foul. You know, and you know, Joe went out, probably gave him his peace of mind, what he thought, and. And uh, but the bottom line, it's Kevin's game. And, uh, he's pitching well. He's doing a good job. So he feels like he wants to throw the cutter. He's going to throw the cutter. And, okay. Another two-two pitch. Another cutter in off the plate. That's a full count. Now what do you do? That's four in a row, correct? So uh, he likes it. That's for sure. Timmy Timmy Loudner talked about this uh, today a little bit in our little get together about throwing this, throwing a lot of cutters, and, and maybe you know if you make sure, like you pointed out, Richard, to get that ball inside, get it in there. So the worst thing that can happen is foul ball. Don't leave it over the plate. The left, tracked by Thomas. Inning over. A long inning and a long battle with Brantley, but Correa won out. Near sellout crowd here at Target Field. Go to the bottom of the fourth. No score. Pepsi fans of the game. Last swing before the ring. Looking like at bachelorette party here, and there are Pepsi fans of the game. No score. The Indians just had a chance to score in the fourth inning. Couldn't get it done. The Twins have had chances in each of the first three innings, but still nothing on the board. Runs are hard to come by. 
I don't have any more excuses, so it's up to the hitters. <laughs> Sun's They're on me. their own now. Sun's tucked behind the yeah, clouds. Nothing. I got nothing. Okay. All right. Chris Colabello, Aaron Hicks, and Clint Thomas to face Kluber in the fourth. Now, we haven't seen Colabello really make solid contact yet, but we have seen him swing, and I've been trying to think about who his swing reminds me of, and it finally occurred to me, and okay. I, I want to uh, throw a name out at you, somebody you managed against. Yes, sir. Steve Balboni. Oh, big Steve. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit long, a little loop. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Now, Balboni was a, he could hit him a long tremendous way. power hitter for uh, principally for the Royals. 1 0 to Colabello. And a strike on the outside corner. I mentioned that name to Ron Gardenhire today, and he threw out a, a, a name with the more close ties to the Twins. That was Matthew Lecroy. <laughs> there you go. Pretty good. Tap foul, one and two. So the breaking ball, the pitch before, down and away, and now come back with the fastball in. And we talked yesterday about Chris being a little bit of a diver and a little bit, a lot of arm and hand action in there, and he's got a lot of movement going on, and he's diving. A little susceptible at times, just running these fastballs in on him. There's more of the hole, backhanded by Cabrera. Played that one much better than he did the one last night. That's one down, and that'll bring up Hicks. Hicks hit the ball hard his first time up, lining out to the warning track. Swisher retreated to make the catch. He smashed that ball. Let's see if we can put another good swing on him here. Hicks had a four hit game. Just prior to the All Star break in St. Petersburg, got the average over 200, but now it's uh, dipped back below 200. Ball one. I suspect Aaron's going to see. Uh, I know the first pitch was a fastball there, ball one. I, I think this is probably going to be some off speed stuff coming at him. I don't think Kubler's going to let him take that swing he had last time. No. Down and away, two and up. Aaron's in a good spot right now. He should be getting a nice fastball to take another good swing in. So let's see if he can uh, get one ready. Mm. Swing and foul straight back. He got the 2 0 fastball, and the pitch was a real good pitch. It was right on the outside part of the plate, and Aaron, he tried to turn on it. Just was able to foul it off. It was a real good pitch by Kuzo. Showed bunt to ball three. It's uh, the second time he's threatened to bunt. Yeah, I've never been a big fan of hitter being ahead in the count and, and trying to lay down the toki. So uh, again, uh, you know, he is the leadoff hitter here, and he is trying to get on. And, and uh, but he did hit him. Blasted the ball so hard last time. I'd sure like to let him swing again. You know, or should be thinking about swinging. Again. Only because he hit the ball so well the first time. Full count with one away in the fourth. Lee Thomas will hit next. Foul tip and Santana hangs on. Two down. And that'll bring up Clean Thomas. Famed car customizer Ryan Friedlinghouse and his crew at West Coast Customs continue. To take common vehicles from ordinary to extraordinary at West Coast Customs. Each episode brings viewers inside one of the most dynamic car shops in the world. A new episode coming up tomorrow. Clint Thomas drew a walk on four pitches his first time up. Kluber has had no problem getting the first two outs in any inning. And then has run into trouble in the first three. We'll hope to dispose of Thomas and have his first one, two, three inning. The pitching coach and the manager are sure hoping he has a couple quick innings and keep this pitch count down some because he's had it mounted up there the first uh, three innings. It was, it's up over 60 some. They got to be 70 some now. 76 on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Needs a couple quick innings here to try to make it through the game. In a reasonable of Thomas, fashion anyway. Head of Thomas on two. 
Martin bounce to the right side. And Reynolds to the bag. And Kluber has his first one, two, three inning. And we have four scoreless in it here at Target Field. Target Field Twins and Indians duking it out as we head to the fifth inning. I'm Jamie Hirsch inside the Minnesota Lottery Winner's Circle. We've already said happy birthday to Tony Oliva celebrating 75 years. We have another birthday girl just five years younger than Tony Oliva. Elise celebrating her 70th birthday. You said you grew up really watching Tony. Watching? Yes, I have um, for many years. I watched him. And what do you think about the Twins? I'm this beautiful night here at Target Field. Oh, it's wonderful. I love coming to these games. Well, pretty good way to celebrate a birthday. We're going to give you $100 worth of scratch-offs from you. the Minnesota Lottery. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Dick and Tom. Thank you, Jamie. Swing, swing and a miss by Carlos Santana, and it's owned too quickly from Kevin Correa. Nice breaking pitch right there from Kevin. And we'll see if he goes back to old reliable. The old cutter. Oh. And the dirt kicked away by Maurer, one and two. Breaking ball. Santana, Giambi, and Reynolds. Our old pitching coach, Dick Such, he, he was a big advocate for that breaking ball towards the dirt. That one was certainly towards the dirt. It made it. Yep. Now a fastball wide. Okay, we'll get your money out, Richard. It's got to be the cutter. Correa threw a lot of pitches in a scoreless fourth. Two and two to the leadoff man in the fifth. Pulled foul. Looked like he was aiming that one for the outside corner, though. Did you see Joe go and sit away, and that was a cutter. Santana with a fly ball to center his first time up. And the designated hitter Giambi will bat second and Reynolds third. Very high, three and two. One walk for Correa. Came leading off the fourth. And it really gummed up the inning for him. He had to throw a lot of pitches, faced five batters for the first time tonight. Doesn't want to issue a leadoff walk here to Santana. 70 pitches, 40 strikes. And a big pitch here to Santana. Struck him out. Nice. Second strikeout for Kevin Correa. Fastball down and away. I think uh, Santana is definitely in that pull mode. Anything that goes down and away, he's not really close to. That's a nice pitch. Good movement, good late movement. 
sinking down and away. And we look forward to seeing some of those tomorrow out of Mr. Gibson. Would that yeah. be correct? I had Scott Diamond going tomorrow. Oh, I thought it was Gibson. Well, well next time Gibson pitches, that's what we look forward to. <laughs> Gibson's going to go in the middle game uh, in Anaheim right okay. now. That was real close. One and zero <laughs> to Giambi. In a three-day window. There. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. Two and zero. Three and zero to mm. Giambi. Green light coming up. I would have to think. Absolutely. That's why he's on the team. He hit the ball over the fence and he takes a strike. I was on the outside part. He's probably looking for the ball in. Something he can really get a good swing at. That was a good take. It's not the one he's looking for. You got to take it. Foul back three mm -hmm. and two. Basically the same pitch, but he was going to let it fly on that one. That's for sure. Giambi's 117 plate appearance or uh, at bat if it is in fact an at bat he had a liner to Clay Thomas uh, for his uh, first at bat here tonight he won't strike out a hundred times this year but the Indians look like they're going to have eight guys mm. who will strike out 100 or more times this year three and two to Giambi oh, wow. and Correa has picked up three strikeouts from the last four batters. His only three strikeouts of the game. He did us a favor there. And Giambi's chase ball four. And like you said, Dick, he, he comes here to swing. He's, he's not get paid to walk. Mark Reynolds has already struck out over 100 times. In fact, he has struck out 114 times in 310 at bats. Hitting just 185 since the end of April. Ball one. I remember last time he got some, you know, he didn't look like he was just trying to hit it over the fence all the time. The game's in Cleveland. Right. And uh, he got some nice base hits. And looked like he maybe found something about himself, but I see now he's having a hard time getting back in the lineup, so uh, he must not have continued. That's a lot of strikeouts. Popped up Ooh. center field. Long time in the air, and Hicks will wait and make the catch. Good inning for Perea. One, two, three, fifth with a couple of strikeouts.
They'll score bottom of the fifth. Beautiful night for baseball. My goodness. You couldn't ask for anything more than what we have weather wise. And a pitcher's duel to boot if you like those. We need some base runners. Okay. How about some base runners with uh, yeah. fewer than two out? And then a few in the outfield grass. Pedro Floramon will lead off the fifth inning. Facing Corey Kluber. It'll be Floramon, Dozier, and Kluf. We'll see if maybe Floramon not only threatens to bunt, but drops down a leadoff bunt single here or tries to anyway. Floramon went down swinging his first time up. Chisholm Hall looks in the Cleveland dugout. And they'll leave him in the infield dirt for right now. And he takes strike one. Twins have had five base runners. They've come in three different innings, and they've all come, all five of them have gotten on base with two outs in an inning one and one so great about the game of baseball you, you know look at last night's ball game and, and how it transpired as, as the game went on and tonight you know you got different scenarios set up you know, no runs on the board you get these two outs nobody on base and then all of a sudden you got two two men Laramont shows bunt takes ball two just the things about baseball that you can't explain or figure out. You know, I mean, you're never going to be able to figure these things out. Lifted to left, retreating is Brantley. One down. And now Kluber's retired five men in a row, and he'll face Brian Dozier. Nothing for nothing here, Richard. But do you think the ball's carrying much here tonight? I don't think it it's really. Like I think we saw coming. early on that wind coming yeah, in from sure left field. Yeah, sure is coming in. Here. The first ball, Cleet Thomas caught. He kept coming in, coming in, coming in, the catching that one there. He, you know, I, it was a fly out and everything. We know that, but you know, I thought he hit it a little bit better than that. You know, he caught that real easy. I don't think the ball's going to go too far to left field. Up and in, ball one. Dozier hit a fly ball to right and hit a pop up to short. Side mm. corner one on one. Right. Might have been Kluber's cut fastball, mm -hmm. some slider, or slider something like that. Piece, 81, yep. Two on one. Fastball at the knees on the outside corner, two and two. A lot of things you like about this guy. He's tall. He throws it at a downward angle. He gets it and throws it. There's no walking around the mound, no fooling around, no looking around in the outfield. You know, he's pretty much all business. Foul tip at Santana mm. can't quite hang on. Get up that now for Brian. Come on, Brian. Hang in there. Give him a battle. Two and two. Oh, breaking ball got him looking. There's a nice breaking pitch here by Kluber. It's nice, quick, tight breaking ball and really froze Brian. With two gone, a reminder to get ready for Fox Sports 1, America's new 24 hour sports network. Fox Sports 1 will be your home for great live sports, all the news and highlights you want, shows and specials that only Fox can bring you. America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1, coming August 17th. Trevor Plouffe has struck out twice against Kluber. He also has two lifetime home runs against Kluber, including one in Cleveland in early May. Dick, not to get off subject here, but is that uh, Fox Sports uh, North show, the, the all sports thing? Is that going to be like a ESPN type thing? Yes, it is. I'm coming out of Los Angeles. Different kind yeah. of shows. Okay. 
competition on the rise then? Yes. I see. Foul back. Two and one. Ninety pitches for Kluber. That was one of the better swings. Uh, Trevor got a nice swing at that ball. He hit the right field last night, but that was a real. That was his best swing here tonight. He got ahead to count. Put a good swing on it. Swing a miss. Two and two. You're going to see that same breaking ball Dozier got. Seems like it would be made to order right here. Trevor struck out last time on this breaking ball. Took it low, three and two. Good take. Bauer on deck. He's already got two hits against Kluber in the ball game. Well, you know Kluber doesn't want to walk Trevor here with Joe staring him in the, the on deck circle. So uh, I would think this would probably be a fastball. Breaking ball, got him. Unbelievable. Went back to a 3 2 breaking pitch. He froze Dozier with one, and he got Bluff with another one. Back to back, 1 2 3 inning for Corey Kluber. For our freeze cam, brought to you by Frostproof Coors Light, we're going to go back to the very beginning of the game. This is a nice play by Brian Dozier, and that's called the spin. And we're not so fun, but that's what he had to do to the way to throw the ball. And you can see him; he's almost laid out right there, and somehow manages to get to Justin and gets it close enough for <laughs> Justin can pick him up. But that's uh, that's fancy. Almost looked like he was. Completely airborne when he flipped the ball. He was sprawled out, that's for sure. Lonnie Chisenhall will lead off the sixth for Cleveland, followed by Michael Bourne and as Drubal Cabrera. Ooh. And it's Correa's turn to duck. That's a diamond. And a single to lead off the yeah, sixth inning. Just the second mm -hmm. Cleveland hit. They've both been singles. And now Michael Bourne, who was robbed of a hit by Dozier's fine play in the first inning, and then drew a walk in the fourth. The essence of a pitcher's duel: no yeah. runs on the board, just a handful of hits, not a whole bunch of walks. Strikeouts a little bit different, but other than that, pretty much identical. Bourne at the plate, and a strike on the outside corner. We'll see if we have some action here from uh, Mr. Francona in the dugout for the Indians. If he decides that uh, it might be time to try a few things. Hit and run, bunt. Down and away missing. One mm -hmm. and one. Good try, Ryan. 
Kevin just missed the outside corner. Decent hit and run count right here, one and one. Rudder stays put down and in two and one. I think that was the uh, cutter or slider. In full born this time, he took it. on the outside corner, two and two. You know, that was two and one count, and there was never an ideal hit and run count. That was it. And Terry Francona likes to, you know, maybe go station station to station here. And he's done a wonderful job of managing this ball club, and he knows his players way more better than we do. So uh, we have to trust him. Foul away, still two and two. I know that at this point in the game, I'd be pushing a button a little bit here, trying to get something going and trying to create some excitement for the, the players on the bench and seeing we get a little juice flowing and. Trying to make something happen. Put a little more pressure on the opposing team. We see uh, from our side, from the twin side, Guardy tried to do a little something early, uh, forcing the Clevelands to make a play. And when we saw yesterday, they, they didn't really ex execute so well. Dozier to Florimo. Safe at first. We told you last night, Bourne with the plenty of at bats has grounded into just one double play this year. Now he's had. Three at bats tonight. I'll do the math for you. That's 286 at bats and only one ground ball double play. And we made that one really close too, and but he was safe. It's good call by the umpire. Uh, he's getting after it. Well, last night a similar situation, I guess you could call it. Alex Rios of the White Sox didn't hustle down the line. And uh, was called out on a double play and was excused from the rest of the game by manager Robin Ventura. Yeah, good for him. Good for Robin. Look at this guy. rolled foul. One strike. Mm -hmm. now that's not. I, you know, I'm I'm not crazy about bunting here, uh, bunting for a base hit. But you know, he's sort of telling the next guy, I'm going to leave it up to you. But. What Estrubel Cabrera did very well there. He bunted the ball perfect or foul. And it's always good on the first strike if you're going to bunt to make sure you either bunt it perfect so you're going to get a hit or it goes foul. And, and you now you only have one strike on you. So perfect or foul is always a good rule to follow. Lifted to left. Thomas back. There's the catch and Bourne will stay put. And he's late tagging up and he stood there watching the ball and you know he's playing out there. If he doesn't know the wind's blowing in, you know, by the sixth inning, and you know, shame on him. But you know, I think everybody in the ballpark knew that ball wasn't going anywhere, and, and uh, you know, he stood there and watched it. And we sort of, we really do encourage our players to go tag up and be ready to take an extra base. And, and whether you go or not, it depends on where the throw is coming in at you. You're looking right at it. So again, uh, but he was late getting back there. And, I don't know where he thought that ball was going to go. Kipnis, the batter, singled his last time up. That's bad base run. When you're involved in these low scoring, close ball right. games, just the subtlest little mistake like that can make all the difference yeah, in the world. We certainly saw that last night. Yep. Yeah, one little misplay here, misplay there, or take a base here. Or, you know, we, we watched the Twins take extra base after extra base. And, uh, you know, certainly paid off for us in the long run yesterday. We got back in the game and ended up winning. But you know, I'm just not seeing some of that out of, out of the Indians right now. One and one yeah. to Kipnis. Drove a sharp single to left his last time up. This one deeper to left. Thomas going back, and this one's going to carry out a home run Mike. to the opposite field. Jason Kipnis with a two-run home run to put the Indians in front. 
just when we thought we couldn't hit one out the left field, Kibnis puts a real good swing on this ball and he drove it. Dick, I'm actually a little surprised he got over the fence, but uh, he's a strong young man and he is the best player on the ball club. And maybe this is why he's an all star this year. Pitch left up. Yeah. That's an elevated fastball there. And he puts a real nice swing on it. If you remember last time up, he hit a bullet to left field as well. That was the first hit of the game for the Indians his last time up. Kipped us now with 14 home runs and 59 runs batted in. Swisher lifts it to left. Thomas with the catch to end the inning, but as they did last night, the Indians strike first with a pair of runs. is presented by McDonald's. Try the new premium McGrath at McDonald's today. I'm loving it. And by Toyota. Let's go places. To find your nearest Toyota dealer and check out our current offers, visit buyatoyota.com. Stanford Health Injury Report. Matt Holiday running to first yesterday. Looked like he pulled it pretty bad. A strained right hamstring. He's on the disabled list, but more than any other team in baseball, I think the Cardinals have the philosophy next man in. Somebody will go in there and until Holiday is ready. It, you don't expect the Cardinals to miss a beat. They're deep in their organization, and I know they got pitching. And they got a lot of guys that come in out of that bullpen, Richard. They didn't throw 94, 95, yeah. 96. They just keep bringing them, bringing them at you. Well, we wondered last night whether Rich Hill would pitch to Joe Maurer. He did not. And the Twins ended up getting the go ahead run. So tonight, there to start goes. the sixth inning, the only lefty in the Cleveland bullpen will face Maurer, Morno, and Doman. Ball one. You saw, if you were watching last night, Hill's numbers are not uh, overwhelmingly positive, to say the least. But he has held left handers to a sub 200 batting average. I'm sort of surprised a little bit. I, I thought Kluber would be out for at least one more inning. Seemed to find something in the middle innings. Of the, his last two innings were his easiest innings. Yes. And uh, the first couple innings really beat him up, I guess. And I guess they feel that's plenty. But uh, I thought we'd see him one more inning. 2-0 to Bauer. And now 3-0. It's just what you're looking for when you're in the dugout and you got your team gets the lead, 2-0, and you bring the guy in. Ball three. Just perfect. <laughs>
That didn't oh. go on very well at all. Wow. A four pitch walk putting Bauer aboard. And we may have seen right here why the move wasn't made last night with the game on the line. If you missed out on the Twins' first DQ camp night, you got another opportunity to target field Saturday, August 3rd for the 6 o'clock game against Houston. The first 20,000 fans will get the cap. Visit twinsbaseball.com or call 833 Twins. Get your tickets for the game and any other game this summer at Target Field. Borno takes a breaking pitch and strike one. I think Justin was too happy with that one. Really. Well, just a handful of at bats against Hill, of course, but Maurer was 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. That's the extent of his history against Hill, and Hill walked him on four pitches. Yeah. One strike to Morno. And strike two. Changed. Went from the fastball to Joe to throw Jason the breaking ball. Fastball didn't work. One and two. Fastball in 92. Missing low two and two. Get that dollar out again, Richard. I think this has to be the breaking ball. And Correa gave the Twins six innings. It might be either Swarzak or Dunsing to pick the ball up in the seventh. Action in the Indian bullpen as well. Rip to right, a base hit. It's a hanger. Mauer will round second and go to third. Swisher's throw over the cutoff, man. Wow. And Borno still stays at first. That was just low enough where Justin couldn't read it, and, and he sort of had to stop, put the brakes on, but uh, that's the kind of things the Twins have been taking advantage of. It. He was in a little bit of a tough spot, and he was behind, so sort of have to, no outs. Threw two real good breaking balls, then he went to the fastball, that didn't work out, and then he, then he hung the breaking ball. First time the Twins have had a base runner, turns out they've got two now with nobody out. All the other base runners earlier against Kluber came with two out in an inning. Dolman at the plate, tying run at first, nobody out. Strike over you know, the for, inside corner. For everybody that watched last night and enjoyed the game last night and, and wondered why. You know, a manager does what he does. And gee, why, why you don't bring the lefty in to pitch to Joe Maurer? You know, it's, you know. It's, well, here you go. This is what a walk and a single. Dribbler to third. They'll come home and the throw offline into the Twins dugout. Morno will go to third. Doma will go to second. Chisenhall didn't give Santana a chance. Another defensive wow. blunder by the Indians. Boy, that's an understatement, Dick. You're being very kind. That, he threw that ball like 30 feet from the catcher, and, and he missed him by 30 feet. Wow. He must have not got in his hand very well. Woo. That's not close. So Hill faces three men. The Twins already have one run in. Tying run at second, go ahead run, uh, tying run at third, go ahead run at second. Wow.
Indians, and of course, he was just called up to the Twins during the All-Star break. He was leading the International League in batting average and RBI, so there's no question he can hit. The question is how he'll do at this level, and he had a bit of a rocky start last night going over 4. I talked to him today, and he said, I just have to remind myself to relax and play the game. He was a little overwhelmed by all the fans and really the enormity of it all at this level. So, Dick and Tom, it's really just a matter of blocking it all out and focusing on the game. Yeah, those things are easier said than done, and, and again, uh, your emotions, uh, it's an emotional game, and, and emotions sometimes take over, and you lose a little bit of control, but uh, Chris is a good, solid guy, he's a good individual, he's hit every level that he's been at, so given the opportunity, let's see what he can do here at, at, at the major league level. Indians playing the infield back, Bordeaux with third, he's the time runner, nobody out. Foul back, one strike. Colabello now with 22 at bats in the big leagues, two singles, no runs batted in. Eight strikeouts. And he can hit the ball a lot of different places on the field to get his first big league run batted in. Well, this is a good opportunity here. He needs to, you know, he got a breaking pitch on the first one there and fouled it back. But the ideal thing would obviously is to get the run in, advance the runner from second to third. Check his swing, one and one. You can still see Dick. He's got a lot of movement going on, and he's diving. Let's see if Shaw throw him that little breaking ball down and away. Maybe he'd stroke on the right field and get an RBI for himself and, and the ball club and advance uh, Doma to uh, to third. There it is. Flip to right. Swisher won't get there. Morno's going to score the tying run. Colabello with his first major league run batted in. Hit it right off the end of the bat to tie the game. Well, that's what we're sort of looking for is that uh, breaking ball away and he got it and he just got enough of the bat to it to, to get it out to right to him. Ooh. So a walk, a single. The baseball taken out of the game. The fielder's choice, a terrible throwing error by Chisenhall. A flare for a hit just like that. It's tied. Still nobody <laughs> out. And Hicks to the plate. Good situation to be a hitter here. You got first and third, no outs. The pitcher's pretty much got to come to you. So hitter's in control. Keep it that way. Outside, Perfect. ball one. Hicks lined out in the second, struck out in the four. He hit the ball very hard his first time up. Second at bat wasn't very attractive, but uh, this is a good situation to be in right here as a hitter. Grounder, use your speed. Beat out the double play, get the RBI. Over by the tarp, out of play, one and one. This mess and how big of a mess it is remains to be seen, but the mess was started by a four pitch walk by the relief pitcher Hill. Talk about changing the momentum of the game. It took about two and a half minutes. And the momentum changed around with the four pitches. One and one to Hicks. Taking a low two and one. Good life fastball by Shaw. 93 on the gun. Breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. Like you said, Dick, he was way out in front of him. The opportunity now, get it in play. Get the ball in play, make something good happen. Two and two to Aaron Hicks. Struck him out. And a big first out in the inning. Big out, Aaron chased out of the zone. Got a little out of kilter with the breaking ball. He was out in front of him. Didn't recover. And now Thomas. Two and 
Thomas with a walk and a ground ball to first. Go ahead run is at third. Only one out. Twins need to get that runner in. Change up. And a wild wave and a miss. Basically the same pitcher through uh, Aaron Hicks. Uh, get him the chase. Just a remote chance, but there there is somewhat a possibility of a squeeze, but I really don't think so. Double play grounder. Kipnis bobbles it. And Thomas beats the relay, and the Twins take the lead. But Taylor made double play grounder, and the Indians didn't turn it. Unbelievable. This is the kind of things that change your seasons around and your hopes and dreams. The Indians the first two days here in, in, in Minnesota have certainly not played any defense at all. None at all. And boy, the pitcher did a good job to get out of this mess. And, and uh, of all people, Kipnis has had a real good night so far. Just mishandles the ball. No error charged on the play, but that's a play that has to be made. You pointed it out there. It was Taylor made a double play. Maria right now the pitcher of record don't know if he's going back out for the seventh inning. Floramon trying to add on here Thomas takes off the pitch grounded to the right side nice stop and a great recovery by Kipnis to retire Floramon. The twins answer a two run top of the six with a three spot in the bottom of the inning and yet they got a little help along the way. of the game no scoring until the six boy I tell you the pitchers were in complete control I know we had there's been men on base and whatnot we couldn't get them in and finally the uh, Indians broke through with the two run homer by Kipnis and then uh, thanks to uh, four straight balls to Joe Maurer a base hit by Justin Morneau and, and uh, Palabello and a few timely misplays by the Indians have got the Twins to lead three to two. As they did last night, the Twins got some help to score three runs. Last night it was enough. We'll see if that's enough tonight. The Twins do go to their bullpen. Left-hander Brian Dunson comes in to pitch to the Indians in the seventh. He'll face Brantley to switch hitter Santana, and then another lefty Giambi. The Twins bullpen a little short. Caleb Thielbar. Has a little bit of a groin pull he suffered during the break. And so the Twins want to shut him down for a couple of days in the hopes that it's nothing serious, but he is largely unavailable tonight. So that means Dunsing finds himself in, in reality the only left handed reliever the Twins have, unless there's a save situation. Well, this is a good spot to pitch in right here. You got the lefties all coming up. And of course, uh, Santana's a you know, switch hitter, but again, uh, this is a this is the inning that Dunsing's supposed to pitch. 
And if everything works out right, he, when these guys come back around, it should be the ninth inning. So let's hope that's the scenario that plays out. I know that's the one Guardy's hoping for. Dunsing pitched in last night's game, faced one man. It was Chisenhall. He got a soft line drive back to the mound and got the man he was asked to get, and then left the ball game. 0 and 2 to Brantley. A dribbler up a line. Dunsing spins and fires oh. into the runner, and a nice reaction by Morno to make the catch one away. That's why we sometimes don't trust the best athletes on the field, and. I always beg the first base. Please be ready. Please be ready for a bad throw. Here we go. How do you like this one? Um, well, it certainly wasn't anything worse than what Chisholm holds. That's for sure. Well, since Bert's not with us, and he will rejoin us after the uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony when the Yankees were mm -hmm. sweeping the Twins here, and Samuel Deduno was getting a lot of choppers, and he made the plays, and then he he missed one play. Yeah. Joe Girardi, former catcher, manager of the Yankees, said. To me, that uh, you know, if you hit it back to a pitcher often enough, eventually they're going to screw it up. That was his opinion. He was a former catcher. I can't argue with that. <laughs> one down and one strike to Santana. You no, know, in our minor league system, we, you know, Joel Leppel is uh, our guy there. He uh, makes sure that uh, the pitchers, you know, I, I feel most of the trouble starts in the ball game right there on the mound. And, you know, sort of like that play. We, you know, so we like to work on these plays quite often with our people, and and uh, we feel this is where most of the trouble starts. So, you know, everybody's going to make a physical error now and then, but a lot of these plays around the mound, we we call the, you know, we call them more mental errors by the pitcher than physical errors. Watch his jersey, right yeah. there. He got hit uh, with the blousiness of his jersey top. And Santana takes first with one out. Giambi the hitter. Actually, it's going to be Ryan Rayburn hitting in Giambi's spot. Rayburn, the erstwhile Tiger, now trying to reestablish himself with the Indians. Outside, ball one. He's had a lot of opportunity to play, especially early in or earlier in the season, and hasn't played it as much lately, but. Uh, He's been one of those journeyman guys that usually finds a spot because he can do a few things. He, you know, he's now basically an outfielder, but he can go in the infield if you need him. He wouldn't want to make a living in there, but he he can play second base if had to. And, and, uh, but basically, an outfielder play left or right. He can hit the ball over the fence, but he does strike out an awful lot. So in that sense, he fits in pretty well with this Indian lineup. Two and zero. Oh, Dunson's fallen behind. The right hand hitting Rayburn. One of the Tigers remind me a little bit of, of the Blue Jays from 20 some years ago where they had all these highly touted outfielders that people thought were going to be the next great this or that. And, and then they all end up landing elsewhere and trying to hang on to their careers. You want to throw Cleet Thomas in that group? We'll let you 2 0. Swing and a miss, a half swing. But Brennan Bosch, who my gosh, he had a series here a couple years ago. It looked like he was going to be a great hitter for the Tigers, and now the Yankees released him yesterday. I remember a couple of years ago that somebody mentioned Mickey Mantle when you mentioned the Brendan Bosch. That that was a you know a little bit of a stretch, but my God, he looked like the next coming, and and uh, look at him today. Two and one to Rayburn. Three and one. Reynolds on deck. We're not to get off track here, but the Royals just jumped back ahead of the Tigers. Yeah, the Tigers. you thought to Verlander and Guthrie that would be a pitcher's duel. They're in the sixth, runs. sixth inning. There are 11 runs on the board. We're not in a good spot here ourselves with uh, Dunsing falling behind after hitting uh, Santana. This is not a good pitch right here. Three and one to a powerful hitter. Three and two. Got away with a fastball, a little bit up in the zone there, and Rayburn took it. And here's decision time for Terry Francona whether uh, start his runner or he hasn't had a what you call a very good at bat so far with the check swing and then taking a three-one fastball. So, and as you pointed out, Dick, he does strike out quite a bit, so a little risky. Santana doesn't go, and it's ball four. 
So Dunsing hits a bat, walks the next guy, and now Reynolds comes up with the tying run at second and one away. Can't be sitting too well in the dugout here. Barry uh -oh. Steinbach is going to come out to the mound. We'll try to find out why Terry Steinbach is making the pitching change. Spoke with Darty uh, earlier this afternoon for a good long period of time. He didn't mention anything to me about it. So Dunsing gets the first batter, hits the next, walks the next, and the Indians are threatening in the seventh. In this game, Brian Dunsing leaves a mess for Jared Burton, who had quite an inning last night. Faced three Cleveland up. hitters and struck them all out. They have very live fastball, threw it right by three straight hitters. Just no chance. You know, bring that to the table again here tonight. We're going to need it. I asked Ron Gartenheyer this afternoon about Burton and whether, you know, what he's found that he didn't have a few weeks ago and whether the Twins would. Shift rolls in the bullpen again, and he said, "Well, Casey Fiend's doing just fine where he's at." But he did say that Burton's pitching with a lot more confidence and throwing more strikes and being much more aggressive on the mound with his fastball. So let's remember back to Dick during this, these games here where he didn't do very well, uh, Jared. He, he did have a few throwing errors. Remember the couple of plays? He, yeah. He mishandled, like I told you earlier. We spoke about with the pitchers uh, usually start a lot of their own trouble right near the mound somewhere. End up making some bad plays and bad throws, and, and as a result, create some situations that they don't need to be in. And it's just if they can make the fundamental plays. So, Jared did cause a little bit of his own issues, uh, but he wasn't throwing the ball at very good at that time, and, and things got compounded with the the errors. But let's see how he can do right here. Tough spot. Reynolds takes up an in ball one. Ninety two. Fastball up and in. I would think Mr. Reynolds would see a little bit diet of the that breaking ball and that, uh, that funny pitch, uh, that changeup. Uh, not give this man a chance to get extended on that fastball. One and oh. Here we go. Looks like it might have been the slider, not the changeup. One and one. You don't want to keep these guys in a fastball situation. This guy like Reynolds who can power the ball over the fence and pretty much swings for a homer just about every swing he takes. But uh, again, keeping him off balance is a key. One and one. Two and one. Back to the fastball there. Now two and one. And behind in the count when he threw the off-speed pitch last time. Make the count one and one, so I would suspect we see the breaking pitch or the change up here. First start for Reynolds in five games. So far, he's 0 for 2. Oh. 3 and 1, Chisenhall on deck. Oh, 
Well, this ought to be an interesting pitch. We missed with the fastball there. And as we know, Jarrett's been working on the fastball and throwing the fastball. He had a great fastball last night. And he just misfired it twice here, but uh, this is going to be interesting here to see what he throws. Popped it up. Bluth, Bauer, and it's Bluth calling for it, making the catch near the on deck circle, two away. Long run for Trevor Bluth. Dick, I'm not quite sure if this is a fastball that's up and away. And I'm not quite sure if it's even a strike, but uh, here we go. It's like a little bit of a slider, huh? That's a cut piece? Yep. You just waved at it. We'll take it. Two down, Maurer and Burton to converse. That was a long run for Plouffe, who came in from a deep third base yeah, to make the catch. Back, yeah. Now Chisenhall, who made the critical error in the bottom of the sixth, has a chance to make up for it to some degree with a uh, an at bat here in the seventh. He had a nice base hit his last time up. Let's hope he's in still in a bad mood for after that throw. Lifted down the left field line near the sidewall and back and out of play. About five rows back. Good fastball on the outside part of the plate. And at least Burton now can work ahead. It just seems like he, I suppose you could say it about any pitcher, but especially with Jared, he's so much more effective when the counts one and two rather than two and one. He's got a variety of pitches. You can throw that change up or a fastball. And he, he's really dangerous. You're right, Dick, when he's ahead of the count. Most pitchers are, but he, I think you're absolutely correct in that assessment. One strike to Chisenhall. Another one flipped foul. Two strikes. Joe seen something he didn't like. I think um, I'm not quite sure, but the runner was sort of leaning. Like the pitch was going on the outside part, but I'm not sure. Not sure why Joe's talking to him. I think the runner might be indicated. Well, he's sort of leaning that way, and, and Jared went pretty quick, and and uh, Joe was trying to get to the outside part. Oh, he wanted to. So you're suggesting, not stating, uh, but suggesting that Santana might be. I uh, was speculating why Joe went out to the right. to the okay. mound. He had 0 and 2 on the hitter. I don't know what would what else Joe would be talking about. Other than that. One and two to Chisholm Hall. Not close. Two and two. He's definitely staying away. Burton struck out the side yesterday, but threw just 14 pitches. He's about to throw his 10th here tonight. Popped him up to right center field. Dolman coming in. Inning over. And Burton cleans up a mess. The Twins still lead by a run.
wonderful night downtown Minneapolis and a great crowd. We just had our seventh inning stretch. And now Another we're going new to, pitcher. We're going to have our AT&T Twitter poll. And okay. the question was, can the Indians overtake Ooh. the Tigers in the Central? And 57 percent of you say no, they won't. Those 43 percent aren't watching. <laughs> you haven't been impressed with the Indians, huh? Well, not these two days. They've yeah. certainly had a, a pretty rough go. Hitting wise and in the field and defense, so two of the major components you need. The starting pitchers have done a decent job, not so much Cooper, but but he gave five pretty good innings and got through it and, and uh, turned it over to uh, maybe not so good bullpen. Tip for this guy. This guy's pretty good. Vinny Pistano, yeah. one of the better setup guys in the league, and he'll be asked to pitch the seventh inning here, facing Dozier, Bluff, and Maurer. Fastball on the outside corner of strike. Pistano's numbers a little inflated. Hasn't quite had the velocity that he had in his last two years. One and one. And so the end of the Cleveland bullpen, which they thought was going to be among the game's best, has had some issues. Pistano and then behind him, Chris Perez. Foul back, and it's one and two. He's had some issues. Uh, on and off the field. There's Perez hoping to get into a ball game here. Uh, and he, he's been a pretty good closer for the Indians past couple seasons. And had a little bit set back this year. And Dozier with a lazy pop up near the line. And Look at this one. Reynolds Look with the catch. Good. And Pistano says, hey, I oh, made the call. Goodness, great. I said a lot of trouble starts around that center. That field. What is he doing? One down, swing for the fences with a new home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. Choose one of 32 home run derby competitors, including everyone from this year's derby. Compete for the highest scores, play the derby mode that recreates the actual home run derby tournament. Available on iPhone and iPad. Select Android devices. You can download free today. Don't. Uh, do it too realistically, or you'll end up like Yoenis Cespedes, who won the home run derby, and now he's got a bad wrist. They say that he did not do it in the home run derby during the All Star break. Instead, did a late batting practice yesterday. One strike to Plouffe and a foul back. Two strikes. Bottom line, he's going to miss some time, which is a shame. He's a real upcoming superstar of the game. That's going to hurt the A's big time. Loof has already struck out three times. And now four times, two down. Ooh. Two down. Joe Maurer will hit. Before we get too far along, we want to give you the information that we were given a few moments ago. Ron Gardenhire left the Twins dugout because of illness. We have no more details. We hope it's nothing of any magnitude. But Gardy will be back in the dugout either later tonight or certainly for the series finale tomorrow. Two down in the seventh, and here's Maurer. He's reached three times a double, a single, and a leadoff walk on four pitches as soon as the Indians turn the game over to the bullpen. Joe's had a good night. Great night last night. Well, most of the time, Joe has a great night. wonder if that feels like, Dick, to have a good night every night. <laughs> <laughs> and a strike called one and one. Twins getting three runs across in the sixth inning. A couple of big Cleveland misplays greatly assisted the Twins rally. At the knees, one and two. Nice little breaking ball thrown by Costano, 79 miles per hour. It's, it's a good, what's the differential? Is that the right word? Between his fastball, which is about 92. Sure. 92 to 79 to keep the hitters off balance that way. It's a little tougher on him. He throws a little three quarters, and these lefties get a little bit better look. There's base umpire Chris Con Conroy saying that Bauer did check his swing. Ouch. 
Roller to Kipnis. A 1 2 3 inning for Pistano. And we go to the eighth and another one run ball game. Your favorite twins players and help raise money for a great cause. Hang with the majors, a charity dinner bartending event to benefit the Minnesota Military Family Foundation. It's coming up Thursday, August 1st at Toby Keith's Bar and Grill in St. Louis Park. You can get photos and autographs of your favorite players in a fun and casual environment. Find out more. Buy your tickets by visiting twinsbaseball.com slash community and click on hang with the majors. And now to outdo you, Dick, this is copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Minnesota Twins LLC. See, I think the stature, <laughs> the stature that you bring to the booth as a former manager goes a long way. I don't know about all that. Toward earning the respect. There won't be any dissemination of that uh, yeah. uh, of this product tonight. Okay. Casey Fiend had a great eighth inning yesterday. He'll try to uh, have another good eighth inning here tonight. Did not face Michael Bourne last night. He faced three guys, struck out two of them, walked one, and then the guy who walked was thrown out trying to steal. That was the strike him out, throw him out in the eighth inning when the game was still tied at two. One strike to Bourne. Chop foul. No, I'm sorry. Trevor's in on the grass, and now he's going to back up with two strikes. But uh, he was looking for a bunt, and uh, Justin Morneau just a touch towards the line for trying to prevent the double. Make him earn it. I'm sorry, Richard. No, Andrew. two strikes to Bourne and Cabrera and Kipnis here in the Cleveland eighth inning. Three left-hand hitters. Slap foul. One of the key parts of the game, I thought, last night, the Twins won a ball game three to two, and the Indians helped them along. Sure. But we've talked about the Indians. They got a lot of guys who swing and miss a lot, a lot of strikeouts. They did not put a ball in play in the seventh and eighth inning last night. That was bad. Burton struck out the three guys he faced. Fiend struck out two of the three, and the other guy was thrown out trying to steal. So you went through the late innings, at least two of them, without one ball being put in play. And then Reynolds struck out to end the ninth. Correct. It was uh, things really deteriorated in the last three innings for the for the uh, Indians, and offensively, defensively, pitching uh, the whole whole ball of wax fell out from underneath. Them. One and two, and Bourne drops a get up, get line it. a left. Wow. Thomas with a shoestring catch. Great play by Cleet. You know, different scenarios. Obviously, it's three to two game, and you may think that well, maybe you should play this ball safe. But Lee was aggressive on it. And he's an excellent outfielder, made a real good play on this ball. And if we remember last night, this play Stubbs had in, in right field, he sort of played it safe, and it really helped us turn the game around. That, 
That ball should have been caught, no doubt about it. And, and Cleet makes a good, gives us a good start to the eighth here for Casey. As Drupal Cabrera will hit. That's a big play. And remember last night, Florimon in the ninth inning made a nice diving stop on a ball to hit to his right and uh, got the first out of the inning. And that first out is so important. Changes the whole inning and the whole dynamics of the inning. You know, it sort of takes away any bunting and hitting and running and things of that nature. So, it, it you know, keeping a guy like Bourne off the base is, is uh, really a imperative that you do that. So, this one hooked down the line and a fair ball into the corner. Come Cabrera on. trying for second. A throw in there and plenty of time. A great retrieve in the right field corner by Ryan Doma two away. Wow, we've had two special plays by our outfielders to start the eighth inning here. Casey Fee is probably uh, thanking his outfielders as we speak, but I don't know if Cabrera really ran all that hard down the line, but again, Doma does just a super job of getting to the ball. And here's another throw by a Twins outfielder that is you can't hand it to the infielder any better. You couldn't have handed that ball to him any better than he did. Super job by Ryan Dillman out in right field. 29 outfield assists and they've spread them around. Dillman yeah. has a few. Chris Parmley picked up a bunch. Right. Aaron Hicks. Strike on the outside corner. Well this ball inevitably should be hit to Hicks somewhere. And he, <laughs> to make it a trifecta. Get Left missed. field right field center field. Here we go. Kipnis hit the two run opposite field home run to put the Indians very briefly in front two to nothing. Yeah. To center. Come on. Hicks going back. <laughs> Makes the catch. Everybody involved in the outfield and only three men bat in the eighth. That's how it happens. <laughs> Welcome back to Target Field. The Twins lead the Indians 3-2 to two as we head to the bottom of the eighth. I'm Jamie Hirsch inviting you to stick around after the game for Twins Live presented by CenturyLink. We'll take a look at all that transpired here tonight, including the Indians' costly mistake allowing the Twins to take the lead. We'll also look at the battle of the bullpens, and we'll get some post-game reaction here from Twins players after the game. So stick around for Twins Live. Dick and Tom. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Eight attendance tonight, 38,626. It was, in fact, a sellout. I thought it was close to a sellout, but they listed it as a sellout. Matt Albers will come in to pitch to the middle of the Twins lineup. Morno, Domit, and Colabello. Good ERA, 33 innings. Good strikeout. Too, too many walks. Down and away, ball one. By the way, Corey Kluber left the game, they now say, with the tightness in, the, in a hip. 
Yeah. So while it looked like he had settled into a groove through six innings, they, uh, the Indians had to make a move. Mm -hmm. On the ground to Kipnis. One down. Morno two for three. That'll bring up Domit, who's 0 for three. Every team has their own little issues and things they have to worry about and try to fix. And, and we have ours, and, and the Indians certainly have theirs. And, but when you see these, you know, some of these top knots, you don't want anybody to get hurt, no matter who it is. But when these, you know, these young, young up and coming pitchers get hurt, I. It hurts me a little bit because I, you know, I, you know, I think as a, I don't know if I'm a purist or not, Richard, about the game, but uh, I appreciate good young pitchers and what they can do, and the kind of careers they can have. To center and Bourne won't get there. A bloop single for Ryan Donut. Well, the Twins haven't exactly been banging the ball around the ballpark with Colabello's. Blue pin to right that uh, pushed across the, the uh, third run of the uh, inning back in the sixth, and now a one out single flared into center field off the bat of Doman. And the teams can be very vicious to you. You know, they hit three balls pretty much right on the button last inning, got nothing to show for it. And, and here we are with a bloop and a couple of bloops, and things have gone our way a little bit. So let's see if Chris can get into one. It was Colabello hitting it right off the end of the bat. Just a thing of, beauty. <laughs> thing of beauty. It was with Doma at third base. And one out. Twins got a big hit to take the lead. That's where we're at. 3 2. And Colabello uncoils one strike. And the 91 mile per hour fastball sinking down and in. That's a nice pitch. Lynn Perkins warming up for what would appear to be a save opportunity. Foul, two strikes. Talked to Perk quick today. He said same formula as last night. And he said that sounds good. So I said I see you in the ninth. So what was the final let's... score last night? Three two. What do we got now? Three two. Well, Bello will try to change that. Yeah, that'd be good. They call insurance. Outside one and two. It's always nice to give your closer or have that opportunity to give your closer a little bit of breathing room. So just in case he makes a mistake and get away with a little something and, and still be okay. So add on is what we need to do here and we're trying to add one on. Be the middle of the Cleveland lineup regardless of what the lead is waiting for Perkins. That's a foul ball. Well, that's another good sinker down and in by. Uh, Albers and that looks like a real nice pitch for him. Plus with Chris diving in there a little bit it makes it real tough to get the bat to him. Well, the twins will face uh, and see a lot of uh, right handed sinkers tomorrow. Justin Masterson will start for the Indian. One and two to Colabello. Santana quickly sliding to his right to make a block. So a little slide piece, 88 miles per hour. You're right, Richard. Uh, Santana made a real nice play on that ball to keep the runner at first. Two and two. Ball, third strike, two away. Good fastball right on the outside. Get caught up, and it's uh, been a case of another uh, night of misplays for the Indians that may cost them a ball game. Well, if you didn't see tonight's game, you remember what last night looked like. It's the same thing. Should have been an inning ending double play that would have ended the inning tied at two. Instead, Doman scored. Cabrera 
cracking one against the wall and right trying for a double and Doman's one hop throw right there. Wow. Aaron Hicks with a check swing strike one. I'm sort of a defensive guy as you know Dick and I appreciate good defense as part of the game and, and just to watch a few of the plays that the outfielders have made tonight. Cleet Thomas and left and had a good play to start the inning and, and Ryan making a, just an excellent play on the ball in right field line and turning and making a, just a wonderful throw. They're good solid plays and uh, plays that fans should enjoy. They're, you know they don't make the box score or anything like that but they sure should leave a, a good mark in the, something to talk about on the way home in the car about the kind of defense the Twins play tonight. One and one to Aaron Hicks. And again, you're talking about the score of the game. Last night's game, you could point to any one of five or six plays that were made on one side, weren't made on the other. You're talking about a one run game, and that's what we've got here tonight, too. And it's been the difference in both games last night as well as tonight. Without a question. One and two to Hicks. He's gone down swinging the last two times up. First swing of the night produced a line drive to the warning track and right caught by Swisher. And then the rest of the night, the pitchers have been away to him, mostly away, 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 breaking balls away, off speed away, fastball away. And Aaron looks like he's in a little bit of a pull mode to me, and I think we're going to have to start hitting a few of these balls to left central and left field. I'm going to clean it up. Ooh. Blocked by Santana, Excellent. but Doma with a good read is able to advance. Uh, you couldn't said it any better, Dick. That was an excellent read by Ryan, and if you can see it, he was off with it right away. Excellent job in the dirt. There it goes. Boom. Wonderful job by Ryan Doma. Have a hell of an inning. Put a runner out at second. Loop one to center. Take a base. Let's see if we score on a hit. That might have been the topic of conversation at second base between he and Cabrera. Cabrera <laughs> saying, What are you doing throwing me yeah. out from the corner like that? He ran a little harder out of the box. I'm <laughs> not worried about <laughs> Two and two to Aaron Hicks. To center. But Bourne is there. And Hicks has struck out twice and hit two line drive outs. It'll be a one run lead for Glenn Perkins. He made quick work of the Indians last night on the ninth. He'll try to do it again tonight.
continuation of uh, what the theme was last night. The Twins playing crisper in the field and the Indians. Last night it was the difference. So far tonight it is the difference. And Glenn Perkins will come into the ninth inning facing the four, five, and six batters for Cleveland. Nick Swisher, Michael Brantley, and Carlos Santana. Twins are going into uh, no double defense here. Trevor at third is about a step, step, or step and a half off the line. Outfielders going to play just a touch a little bit deeper to try to cut off the alleys. The ball's going into the gap. Swisher hitless in the series, 0 for 7 with four strikeouts. He did not face Perkins last night. And Perkins starts him with a high fastball. To right field, down for a hit. Remember last night in the ninth inning, it was Brantley who will hit now, who sent a liner toward left field. Florimone with a diving catch for the first out, but Swisher hits an opposite field line drive for a leadoff single tonight. Yeah, that's the best swing Swisher's had in two days, and he's going to have a pinch runner. That looks like Stubbs. Drew Stubbs will run for Swisher. Brantley last night hit the flare toward the hole and Florimone went out onto the outfield grass and laid out made a diving catch. Hey Superman did that for sure. That's a great play. And Florimone's going to probably be a little bit shorter lined up here for the double play type thing and if he hits that same ball tonight it's going to be a hit. How about the old 6 4 3. Squaring oh, wow. the bunt. And Perkins turns and fires to Warno. A sacrifice advancing Stubbs to second base. Now that's uh, the old adage you play for, to win on the road, play for a tie uh, on the road. But this is the reverse of that, right? Uh, you can't get any more reverse than that. Uh, I'm, I don't know what to think of that, Dick. Uh, whether well he's giving him a high five so I guess the manager asked him to bunt it and he, he executed the bunt. He's going to take his chances uh, with Santana and, and Rayburn to get the job done. But you're absolutely correct. On the road you play to play to win. He knows the numbers you just saw. Perkins retired Santana quickly last night a little semi pop up to Dozier for the second out. But in his two prior at bats against Perkins, Santana's hit home runs. Oh, well, there you go. First pitch, high and tight, one and zero. Oh. Fouled away, one and one. I mean, he took a swing at that one. I think he meant business. Hit the fastball up and away. He took a good hack at it. Santana. Hit by a pitch, just brushed his jersey in the seventh. He walked last night. He's hitless in the series, 0 for 5. We were surprised last night when they pitched to Mauer. They elected to pitch to Mauer and, and sort of surprised again tonight about the fun. Swing and a foul, one and two. Santana slapping his helmet as if mm -hmm. I just missed my pitch. They had two good whacks at it so far. This has to be the slider, I would think, Richard. The back foot slider? The back foot slider, the one that disappears and is a ball that people have to swing at. I don't think Perk wants him swinging at that fastball again like that. No, I don't. Ooh. Went upstairs with a fastball. 96 mile per hour. And that's that mono e mono thing. Here we go. This is a real live fastball out of Perk. Perk's on high heat. And give Santana credit for getting the bat to it. We wouldn't do that again, would we? There's the slider, and he didn't chase it. Boy, a good take by Santana. Didn't miss clipping that corner by much. They feel somewhat comfortable against Perkins, but as you pointed out last night, he sure wasn't too comfortable, but he does have a couple home runs in his in his resume against Perk, so there must be something about it. Two and two. Three ah, and two. Another good take. Rayburn on deck. 
It's real tough to take that pitch, and got to give uh, Santana some credit here. That's two good takes in a row. I guess we're back to country fastball. He's taken the sliders and swung at the fastball. Got him. Mm. Upstairs, 97 miles per hour, two down. Tough to lay off that pitch. It's up in your eyes, and it's really a hard pitch to lay off. It's probably the hardest pitch in baseball to lay off of. It looks so big, and then it just zooms by your bat. You get no chance. But that was obviously elevated out of the strike zone, and, and uh, Santana did us a little bit of a favor. Two down, Rayburn the batter. The tying run at second with two away. Rayburn two hits and 14 at bats against Perkins swing and a miss on the slider. Foul back. I want to get this guy here Richard. I don't want to see this next guy coming up. He's dangerous. Well, let's just see. Let's just see if Glenn Perkins can take it home here. We got options here. We can throw the slider down towards the dirt. We can throw the high fastball. He's got options. He doesn't have to throw a strike. Oh, good pitch. That's the same pitch that Santana swung at. At 97 miles per hour. Sellout crowd here at the ballpark. Everybody standing. Mm. Just missed the corner at 98 miles per hour. The thing was there that Joe sat on the outside and had a move to catch it. And I think that's why he got called the ball. But it's really close. You know, if he didn't have to reach, it might have been a different story. Two and two to Rayburn. Down the right field line. Twisting. Foul. Wow. There's a little foul territory there, about five feet. Mm -hmm. And normally a ball like that will slice. That one didn't seem to slice much. <laughs> we were hoping for the big slice, and we only got the little slice. The, the building at Target Field went silent. <laughs> oh. Had a meeting going out to see just exactly what uh, Glenn's got in mind here. This time called at the plate. I still like slider here, Dick. Missed. Oh, wow. And Rayburn took a pitch that would be very difficult to stand up there with two right. strikes and take. That's a real nice pitch. Give him credit. Three and two. Let's throw it again. Popped him up. Morno retreating. In foul ground. Makes a catch. <laughs> Slider. Back to back. Oh, three man. to two wins over the Indians. Glenn Perkins with a big save tonight. And the slider got it done. Great way to start the second half of the season. Tom Hanneman, he had the two in front of the break and the two after the break. And he got a four game winning streak. Dick, you're not standing on core for the Twins who record their 12th series win of the season. Beating the Indians 3-2 will break it all down next on Twins Live.